Wow, uh, thanks for that introduction. Uh, thanks to all of you for coming out to the Robot Hall of Fame induction ceremony. I'm gonna tell you right now that having you guys here means a lot to these robots, especially Gort. Look at him. Okay, <laughs> today I'm gonna tell you all the truth about robots. That's the title of this talk. Uh, but before I provide any answers, I'm gonna ask a few questions myself. First of all, why am I here? <laughs> uh, I went from finishing a very respectable PhD in robotics to writing How to Survive a Robot Uprising, a book which describes in gory detail how humans can stay alive when our metal friends decide to rise up against us and kill us all. Hmm, uh, it's kind of hard to pin down exactly why, but the book just doesn't seem to paint the most flattering portrait of robots. I don't know what it is, but yet the Robotics Institute of Carnegie Mellon, my alma mater, uh, did not disown me after I wrote this book. They did not send the Highlander UGV to run me down in traffic. <laughs> yeah, apparently they can do that. So watch yourself. It's big and red. No, indeed, they invited me back here to give this talk. So my next question is, why did so many robotics researchers actually lend me their expertise while I wrote this book? Uh, I interviewed graduate students, professors, defense contractors, and uh, professionals from industry, and uh, you know, I walked right up to these extremely successful, uh, smart, and serious people, and I asked studious questions like, so how would you conduct hand-to-hand -hand combat with a robot? Or, you know, just saying, how would you bring down a giant walker, you know, <laughs> just in case you were there and then came walking? <laughs> And, uh, you know, can a Terminator really run as fast as my car? Because, you know, I drive pretty fast. Uh, so the people I spoke to were actually really happy to envision these absurd scenarios. And uh, the, the scenarios were taken straight from science fiction, yet that didn't phase uh, the researchers that I spoke to in the least. But they gave me serious, thoughtful answers. Sometimes the answers were short. One of my favorite answers came from Gregory Abowd, uh, a well-respected expert in the field of ubiquitous computing down at Georgia Tech. And so uh, ubiquitous computing and smart houses, that was also my uh, research area when I was at Carnegie Mellon. And so I was very proud to give Gregory a section of the book to review called How to Escape from a Smart House. So this is what to do when, you know, your house decides to slowly start trying to kill you by uh, leaving the doors open for burglars, stuff like that. Uh, and so Gregory read it, he, he reviewed it, and he gave me back a short note that said, you know, it was a good section, Daniel, but all the advice was so obvious. <laughs> I don't, well, you know, I think that was probably the best thing that he could have said, you know. It's, it's obvious to a roboticist, and that word does exist, roboticist. I love it. <laughs> so anyway, I could be wrong, but the people I interviewed, they even seemed to think that it was fun to uh, consider these imaginary situations. And now my last question is, why is the general public so fascinated by killer robots that want to, you know, rip us to shreds? I went on a tour to promote the book, and it was great. Everybody laughed with the book. Uh, they thought it was really funny, which is good, because that's what I was going for with it. Uh, actually, I should mention, there were, uh, the people in Berkeley, California, didn't think it was very funny. <laughs> they, uh, they're apparently terrified by robots <laughs> and scientists <laughs> and the government. <laughs> but generally, people were fascinated. And as a result, they asked lots of fantastic questions, which I really love to answer. Some were really straightforward, like, how can I fool face recognition? You know, you just put on a hat and a fake mustache. It's not that hard. Uh, do robots watch me while I sleep? Yes. Uh, <laughs> But just as often, I would hear questions like, could a robot defeat a zombie? <laughs> yeah. And you know, I would do my best to answer. And then there's the inevitable follow-up question, which is, but what about a robot zombie? <laughs> and that's just silly, I think. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with reality. Uh, so anyway, I was left wondering why these people are laughing about killer robots instead of running for the hills like my book suggests that they should do immediately. 
So to sum up, why did the Robotics Institute invite me back after I wrote a book exposing the secret lives of killer robots? Why did robotics researchers give me advice in the first place? And finally, why do most people think that robots, even killer robots, are fascinating and funny? And here's my attempt at an answer. Robots have always been a combination of fact and fiction. The fictional robots in movies inspire us to build real robots. And those real robots go on to inspire Hollywood producers to pay Arnold Schwarzenegger $30 million to get naked in yet another Terminator movie. <laughs> it's a beautiful symbiosis of imagination and technical skill. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's why today we're gathered to honor five very different robots, some of them real and some of them not real yet. Some robots have had a subtle, widespread aesthetic influence. For example, since her inception, Maria from the 1932 film Metropolis has been key to the design of sexy robots. Other robots have had a technical influence. The dog-like Ibo robots provided a widely accessible platform for research on multi-robot cooperation. And I don't know if any of you have ever had this experience. It could be just me, but nothing beats the feeling of stumbling upon a group of wild Ibos playing soccer in a misty meadow. There's just something really magical about that. It's beautiful. Don't worry, I'm getting almost to the last page here. Off the soccer field, movies give us the ability to explore scenarios that have not yet come to be. David, the boy robot from the movie AI, has motivated researchers in the area of human-robot interaction to push the development of clingy, overly emotional humanoid robots. And I mean no offense to C-3PO or to Anthony, who I understand is, is he, an, does he act as C-3PO or are they two different, who cares? So, let me get back. <laughs> uh, movies like AI, artificial intelligence, they make people ask themselves interesting questions, like could I love a machine? Or could a machine love me? Or if I were to ditch a robot boy in the woods and leave him for dead, could he, millions of years later, revive my frozen corpse with the help of a machine, with the help of a human-like machine alien? <laughs> these, there's really things to ponder here. <laughs> if you've got the time. And speaking of loving a robot, you've never had a real hug until you've embraced a Scara robotic arm. And even better, that arm can reproduce your hug thousands of times a day with millimeter precision. I swear you can feel the love being squeezed right out of you, like orange juice. Yeah. Oh, safety note for any kids out there, never ever hug a robot arm. That was a joke. It's not orange juice, it's blood. It's coming out of you. Okay. Finally, we have Gort. Introduced in the movie The Day the Earth Stood Still, Gort is an eight-foot-tall alien robot with the power to destroy the world. Gort wasn't a very talkative movie robot, but he came to teach humankind one lesson, humility. Technically, Gort also spurred innovation in the research area of robot laser eyes. <laughs> that was a lie. I know it's supposed to be about truth, but uh, yeah, I threw a lie in there. Laser eyes don't exist, but they're coming. Okay, and those are our Hall of Fame inductees. So now I'm gonna spill the truth about robots. Uh, the truth is that robots impact our imaginations and our research, whether they are real or fictional, whether we love them or hate them, and whether they work hard for us or shred us to bloody pieces with their searing hot razor wire tentacles. And that, my friends, is the truth about robots. Thank you. <laughs>